Hello and welcome to this video on series and parallel resistors. In previous videos we've looked at how voltage, current and resistance are all linked together and so resistors are actually very important components for being able to control the amount of current and the amount of voltage that we have in a circuit. In this video we're going to look at two arrangements that resistors can be connected together in and on the left here we have series resistors and on the right we have parallel resistors and what I want to do is work through a quick example of how we can calculate the total resistance of different resistors when they're connected together first in series and then in parallel. So let's imagine first of all that we have um, these two resistors R1 and R2 and what I want to do is uh, write down a couple of formulas for how we can calculate the total resistance in series or in parallel. And in series, the formula is very, very simple because if we have two resistors connected together in series like we have on the left, the total resistance is simply the two resistances added together. So if I was to write a formula for that in this instance, it would be something like this. It would be RT, the total resistance, is equal to R1 plus R2. And in the case of a parallel circuit, we have a similar formula, but with a little twist to it. Uh, we have 1 over RT, so 1 over the total, is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Let's put these into practice with a quick example. Let's imagine that R1 is a 10 ohm resistor. And let's imagine that R2 is a 20 ohm resistor. And I'll make that the same case for these resistors on the right hand side. So we've got R1 is 10 ohms and R2 is 20 ohms. Now on the left hand side, first of all, in series, like we said, very, very simple. RT is just a case of adding together R1 and R2. So we would get a total of 30 ohms. Now on the right hand side, this is a little bit different. So we're going to say that 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So we say that that is the same as 1 over 10 plus 1 over 20. And that's going to give us an answer of 0.15. Now, the crucial point to make here is that we've not really finished working out the answer here because we've actually calculated 1 over RT and that's not what we want. We want to work out RT. So a slight rearrangement is involved here. In, the, in this case, RT is going to be equal to 1 over 0.15. I've simply transposed that equation. Rather than saying 1 over RT equals 0.15, we can say that RT equals 1 over 0.15. And that comes out as 6.67 ohms. Now, looking at these two answers, you can see that we get a big difference in the total resistance, depending on whether we've calculated these uh, resistors to be in series or in parallel. And one other thing to note is that interestingly, when two resistors are connected in parallel, you'll actually see that the total resistance is less than either of the two separate resistors. So in, in this case, a 10 ohm and a 20 ohm resistor in parallel are going to give me a total of less than either of them. We're going to get 6.67 ohms. Another thing to say about these two formulae is that we can extend them both if we have more resistors in series or more resistors in parallel. So for example, uh, on the left hand side here, if I have more resistors in series, I would simply add another term to the formula. So RT would now be R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on if I had more resistors uh, in series. And then again, on the right hand side here, I've got uh, three resistors in parallel, I would just extend my formula 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 
and so on if I had uh, more resistors connected in parallel. Let's look at another example in the form of a circuit now, but again I have two resistors connected in series and let's give them some values. Let's say that R1 in this case is a 220 ohm resistor and R2 is a 330 ohm resistor. Now I want to calculate a few parameters in this circuit. Uh, first of all I want to calculate the total resistance. I want to calculate the current in the circuit and then I want to start calculating some voltages in this circuit as well. And then at the end we'll also calculate the total power in this circuit. So it brings together a few of the different formulae we've been looking in and uh, looking at in previous videos. Um, but first of all, let's also specify in this circuit we have a, a battery that's powering uh, this circuit and we're going to say that that is a 22 volt battery for the purposes of this example. So let's start by like we said calculating the total resistance in this circuit. So the first thing we said was because these resistors are in series we can use this formula RT equals R1 plus R2 and we know in this case that R1 is 220 and R2 is 330 and 220 plus 330 is going to give me a total of 550 ohms. So now that we know the total resistance in this circuit, we can work out the total current that's flowing around this circuit through both of those resistors. And the way we're going to do that is using Ohm's law. And so what we said uh, in a previous video is V equals I times R. Uh, for, for Ohm's law and we can simply transpose that formula to get I equals V over R or V divided by R. So in this case we know the voltage is 22 volts so we're going to say that that is 22 divided by our total calculated resistance there of 550. And if we work that out 22 divided by 550 I get 0 0.04 amps. So 0 0.04 amps. Or if I wanted to express that in milliamps, we could multiply that by a factor of a thousand. There's a thousand milliamps in an amp. So that would be the same as saying 40 milliamps. So now that we know the resistance and the current in this circuit, I can also calculate some voltages in this circuit. Now we're given the supply voltage, but what I can also calculate is the voltage across R1. So if we imagine we were just measuring the voltage across that one resistor there, and we'd call that V1. And we could also imagine that we were calculating the voltage across just the resistor R2, V2. Um, we're going to calculate those, and we're going to use Ohm's law for that as well. So I'll get rid of these doodles here and we'll get back to Ohm's law because we said that V equals I times R. Now, in this case, V is not the supply voltage. V is the voltage that we're working out. And we're going to, in this case, say uh, V1 is the voltage we want to work out first, the voltage across R1. And to do that, we're simply going to use Ohm's law, I times R. We're going to use the current I that we've calculated. That was 0.04. I should use uh, the, the, the normal unit amps in this, in this formula. So current 0.04 multiplied by R, which is in this case the resistor in question, which is 220. And if I do that, 0.04 times 220, I get a voltage of 8.8 .8 volts. So 8.8 .8 volts across that resistor there. And I can do the same for V2. We can say that V2 is the same current because the same current flows through the whole circuit, 0 0.04, multiplied by, in this case, 330. And if I calculate that, 0 0.04 times 330, I get an answer of 13.2 volts. Now, one of the things we're going to look at in future videos is 
Kirchhoff's voltage law because what you might notice is that V1 and V2 both add up to the supply voltage. So in fact, that supply voltage, 22 volts, has been shared out amongst those two resistors. And we're going to look at that a bit more in a later video. But for now, the last thing we want to do is work out the power in this circuit. And another one of the formulas that we've previously looked at is to say that P equals I times V. Power equals current times voltage. And we want to work out the power in the whole circuit. So I'm going to use the supply voltage, 22 volts, and I'm going to use that current that we calculated. So we can say that for the whole circuit, I is uh, 0 0.04, multiplied by V, the supply voltage, 22. And when I calculate that, I get an answer of 0 0.88 watts. 0.88 watts, watts being the unit of power. I could express that a little bit better. Um, rather than saying 0 0.88 watts, I could say 880 milliwatts. Again, multiplying by a factor of a thousand because there's a thousand milliwatts in a watt. Let's look at one final example this time with two parallel resistors connected in a circuit with a supply voltage, a battery, um, which powers this whole circuit. And let's use um, the same resistor values as before. So R1 in this case is 220 ohms. And R2 again is 330 ohms. And let's say in this case that our supply voltage is different. Let's say that it's 33 volts. And what we're going to do is we're going to do something similar. We're going to calculate some currents in this circuit. And we're going to calculate the power in this circuit like before. But one thing that we have to realize in this circuit is that we're going to calculate the current that goes around the whole circuit as before. But at some point in a parallel circuit, there's going to be a split in that current. And what we're actually going to find is we're going to end up with current splitting off in two directions. Some of the current will go through R1 and some of the current through R2. So we're going to calculate three currents in this circuit. We're going to calculate the supply current, which we're going to call IS. We're going to calculate the current going through R1, which we're going to call I1. And then we're going to calculate the current going through R2, which we're going to call I2. So we'll get to those in just a few seconds. But first of all, before we can do any of that, we need to calculate the total resistance in this circuit. And in this case, we know that we have two resistors in parallel. And the formula for two parallel resistors is 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And all we would do in this case is plug our numbers in and say 1 over 220 plus 1 over 330. And when I do that, I get an answer of 0 0.0075 recurring. Now, what I need to do is obviously, like we said before, we need to do 1 over 0.0075 to get our final answer. Now, one little tip here that I would suggest is if you've got a number like this, rather than writing it down and then plugging it back into the calculator again, if you have a, a good calculator, it should have an answer function or an answer button, uh, which looks like this with answer ANS written inside. What you can do is simply rather than writing down our value and then writing down one over the value to get our final answer, we can simply use the function one over and then the answer in the calculator. And if we do that, then we should automatically get our final answer. So I've done this in my calculator and one over the answer has given me a final answer here of 100 and 32 ohms. Now that we know this 132 ohms, 
we can, just like before, calculate the total current in the circuit. And to do that, we're going to use Ohm's law again. So I equals V over R, voltage divided by resistance. So in this case, V is 33 divided by R, which is 132. And I get an answer of 0.25 amps. Now, just like before, 0.25 amps, you might better express as 250 milliamps just by multiplying it by a thousand. But we have this current now, 0.25 amps. So again, on my diagram, what I can say is I have my supply current, IS, and it's 25 milliamps. Sorry, 250 milliamps, I should say. And we know that that current is going to split. Some of that current is going to go this way through R1, and some of that current is going to go through this way, this way through R2. Now, again, in a subsequent video, we're actually going to look at this in more detail. We're going to look at Kirchhoff's current law, which goes into how these currents split in, in, in different circuits. But we're going to look at it here very quickly, because what we can do is we can use Ohm's law again. If we look at this circuit, what we can see is that both resistors are connected directly to the power supply. So I'll show you what I mean in the sense that R1 is connected directly to the power supply, like so. And likewise, R2 is also connected directly to the power supply. Now that's not something we can say about a series circuit, but it does work in this parallel circuit. So what I can do is I can use this to my advantage and I can use Ohm's law again, because I want to work out two more currents. I want to work out I1 and I2. So just for clarity's sake, this current here, I'm going to call it IS. So we've worked out IS, the supply current, the current coming out of the battery. But now I want to work out I1. And the way I'm going to do that is just by using Ohm's law again, because I can say that V over R, if I want to work out the current just going through that 220 ohm resistor, I can say that that is 33 divided by 220. And I know that because it's the case that the resistor is connected directly to that 33 volt power supply. So 33 divided by 220 gives me a, um, a current I1 of 0.15 amps or 150 milliamps. And we're going to do the same thing for I2. We can say that I2 is equal to 33 divided by 330. And that gives me a current of 0.1 amps or 100 milliamps. Now again, thinking ahead to when we're looking at Kirchhoff's current law, you might notice that our two separate currents, I1 and I2, add up to the supply current, IS. Now, that's what we would expect, really, because the supply current uh, coming out of the battery is going to split up into these two currents, I1 and I2. So it makes sense that they add up to the supply current. The last thing we need to do very quickly is to work out the power in this circuit. And again, we're going to use the same method, P equals I times V. So we can say straight away, because we know we're working out the power for the whole circuit, we're going to use the supply current, 0.25 multiplied by the voltage, 33. And for that, I get an answer of 8.25 watts. So I hope you found this video useful. We've looked at series and parallel circuits and calculated some different parameters for each of them, including voltages, currents, and power.